Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time here, please make sure you subscribe so that you will receive a notification whenever we upload a new video. In this video, we are going to talk about the West Nile virus. So in visual learning, here is the picture showing the river Nile. The West Nile virus belonged to the family Flaviviridae. And I talked about the general features of this family in the previous video when I talked about the yellow fever virus. So in this video, I am going to talk about the West Nile virus only. Okay, so let's get into it. On geographical distribution, the West Nile virus is found in North America, Asia, Africa, and is actually endemic in the Middle East. This virus is transmitted through mosquito bites and other reservoirs include birds, horses, and dogs. Right, on clinical presentation, most of the patients don't show any symptom and some patients can present with headache or maculopapular rash. Uh, so these two symptoms like headache and maculopapular rash, it was thought to be like... Um, self-limiting meaning to say uh they they thought like it, it will only last for one week and go but later on they realized that patients who usually have these symptoms will later on develop some mental problems like inability to concentrate so the main serious form of the west nile virus uh is the neuroinvasive form and we can divide the signs into Number one, the signs of viral meningitis and the signs of encephalitis. The signs of viral meningitis include a fever, headache, and the actual meningeal signs like neck stiffness. And on encephalitis, the patient will show uh, altered mental status, extra pyramidal symptoms, and flaccid paralysis. So patients who usually show these motor symptoms may also develop polio-like syndrome. So this is like the anterior horn of the spinal cord pathology. And some of them may show uh, symptoms of Guillain-Barre syndrome. And this one is associated with uh, demyelination. And now on diagnosis of the West Nile virus, Firstly, we can do uh, we can detect the virus by isolation, and then we will do the polymerase chain reaction. But uh, that result cannot give us uh, like the proper diagnosis, so we will also need to submit the antibody titers. So we will take a uh, serum or cerebral spinal fluid (IgM) these antibodies, right? So what will happen is. If this result is positive, then we need to remember that the IgM antibodies uh, for the West Nile virus cross-react with those of uh, dengue virus, uh, yellow fever, and St. Louis encephalitis. And also, these antibodies, they can last for uh, about a year, right? They can last for 12 months after infection, right? So what we need to do is we need to detect uh, the IgG, right? So uh, neutralizing IgG antibodies against the West Nile virus must be present in the same sample to confirm the diagnosis of the West Nile virus. All right, on treatment, uh, there is no treatment for the actual infection, other than supportive care. So on supportive care, we need to make sure the patient is is taking um, proper nutrition. Uh, we should also maintain electrolyte balance, etc. And on prevention, uh, the vaccine is still being developed, right? So we don't have the vaccine yet. 
but what we can do, uh, we can avoid uh, being bitten by these mosquitoes, right? So there are different ways of preventing ourselves. And one example is just to eliminate mosquito breeding areas like uh, getting rid of uh, stagnant waters. And we also wear uh, long-sleeved shirts and we can use mosquito repellents, etc. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment on the comment section, and until next time, head bowed.